What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Bittersweet Podcast. It's your girl, Wintana. And I'm Rahel. How are you? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. It's, it's funny. We literally just had like a freaking two-hour conversation <laughs> right before this, this podcast. I was so like mellow and just tired from, from the day. Yeah, I've been feeling the same way. Like my procrastination lately has been absolutely Yeah. F-ed. Like I just can't work. Mm. Like I was at work today and I was just like, I literally got, I was just staring out the window. Yeah. Because it's just like avoiding anything, but like actually doing something. And I have so m- much to do. Do you think it's because it's, we're getting to the end of the year? I think so. I saw a tweet today and it was like, when you realize there's only four months left of the year. That's crazy. Yeah, I think I'm like a bit burnt out, but it's so weird. This year compared to last year is so chill. This year was a nice year. This It's been, it's actually been a, it's been a really good year. Um, and I've been feeling like really, I've just been feeling pretty good most of the time. Yeah. Um. So it's been, I've just been, I feel like I've like, Really just calm down. Yeah. <laughs> from like, from what from was going just on Just ultra last year? stress, like kind of catas- catastrophize, catastrophizing. Yeah. <laughs> catastrophizing. Catastroph- catastrophizing catast- things. Making catast- a, a little thing like, you know, you know when you obsess over a task and then you realize it's actually going to take like, two, it takes you two, two seconds. seconds. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's self-awareness. It's self, when you realize that yeah. you realize that these are not big like i feel like when you come up with a strategy to help you work on these things even if you don't always use the strategy at least you're aware of it yeah because i used to freak out with like emails and da, da, da. so i came up with a with a strategy to be like all right let me do my emails at um like in bulk and i'll have like sections of the day that i do certain things because i know my brain is active Smart. and my brain is by two o'clock it's out don't expect anything from me (laughs) don't call me like you'll be lucky if there's like a lot of things that happen after two o'clock so um but then if i don't if i'm thinking oh my god i have to do all these emails i'll just remember that i know that it doesn't take you know what i mean yeah it's just like plus i just think we make a lot of things a bigger deal than it is yeah 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 i think i definitely think that we do but like yeah it's just been it's been helping a lot to just like change the mindset and just kind of like yeah not not deep it but I don't know. For that reason, it's been like lovely. It's been nice. Been chilling. Been chilling. Yeah. How about you? How are you, sis? Same, sis. Same. Same. We've, uh, the thing is, I was trying to say we have nothing to, to small talk about. Yeah. Because <laughs> we've literally done everything. Yeah. So let's just let's just dive into the episode. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start off with our bittersweet of the week. Yes. Um, I'll take it away with the bitter. Ugh. We were saying I'm also it's so actually, easy to come up with bitter because I'm like, hmm, what should I? Oh, yeah, I saw this. I'm always seeing something online. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've seen uh, there were so many bitters this week. That's why um, when you were like, oh, I don't know, like, I what, like I'm, there's what so I much that uh, could have that. But I think bitter is also hard because it's like, I don't like looking at this stuff sometimes. Yeah. It depends how you twist it though because with this one that I'm about to mention, it was like, so it was the the brawl that happened in Montgam- Montgomery, Alabama. Mm. So I don't know if you saw anything about it, but there was a brawl that happened at Riverfront, yeah. at Montgomery Riverfront. Basically, it was like this. Um, I think he was a black security guard that was working at the at the um, where the boats are kind of where they lay out the boats. I don't know how to what you call it. A the dock. dock. Yeah, <laughs> a dock, and. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I can't come up with the words, okay? It's, it's a weekday and it's 6.30 <laughs> yeah. p.m. And basically, he was like there minding his business. You just see v- video footage. And then there was a white family who had the they, they, something to do with their boat. I think, I don't know exactly what happened, but I think the security guard was saying you can't do something because of whatever reason. It turned into an altercation. The altercation escalated. Then it was the whole, all the white people bashing this man mm. beating what? him up what next thing you know so that's what makes it a bitter thing because it's like who do you think you are mm. like what is this Wait, why were they beating him up so basically what happened was the fight between the men identified by authorities as white and a black co-captain of a river boat trying to dock in a space they were blocking was it captured on video okay. so because they were blocking he was blocking their space yeah basically is what happened it escalated into a brawl 
um, that involve multiple individuals and has one witness trying to trying to say like racial slurs. But basically what happened was it was so the video shows all the white people basically trying to beat this this man up and then next thing you know is a black man sees what's happening so he sees it and he's like what's going on runs yeah runs 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 comes comes in starts beating him up another one comes in one swam through <gasps> the other side of the river <laughs> came it, beca- it became this entire this brawl of just like everyone going in what? and it was just so insane but then also i was kind of like i'm glad that they're obviously protecting this guy because he was on his own and there yeah. was a whole family of people but yeah. it was like it just was insane wow. people are grabbing chairs smashing people's mm. heads it was that's what i'm saying people are getting arrested some people just took it too far it was like yeah what why, are you are you, about? why are you doing all of that why are you fighting why are you fighting why to begin fighting? with but also um hello like what did you think this was did you think you could just come and beat this man up yeah, get away yeah, with yeah. it yeah and um but like i mean yeah fair enough there's just like no fair no enough no care no sense for people the no people sense of do. humanity no decorum yeah. like how yeah. are you acting like this in public a yeah. whole these are grown adults i don't understand adults that fight or like men that that's why i always say if you want to like if anyone if any man like defends my honor by like fighting physically yeah with another man it's like please step aside that's just not attractive no, he, to me. i want him to fight for me no i don't i think the whole like, okay oh. actually let me let me let me rephrase what i'm trying to say i don't want you to fight and start a fight because if a man imagine your man starting a fight and then he loses or like <laughs> imagine he loses imagine he oh, wait, has, a man up. Ever, have, has a man ever fought for you no I, i've like, been, like been in a situation oh no i have i've had like a friend um where it was like i was getting like heated with someone and we were just kind of both yelling at each other yelling at each other, and then a the guy had to then the guy was trying to like uh, like he's trying to like come to me and yeah. then my friend was there and he was like what and then it became a whole thing of them yelling now but like i would would hate for a man to start a fight yeah and then yeah like per- no, even if, even if he didn't lose like i'd hate for you to start the fight yeah and then if you lost on top of that that's just like that's um embarrassing, we have yeah. to go <laughs> yeah. that's so embarrassing <laughs> but if he if he fought to protect me because someone was coming for if me someone, obviously i mean i i mean like more not if someone's if i'm in danger obviously yeah, yeah. If but if it's if it's like you know you're just jealous or something that's i think i guess no, that's, that's what you mean when it's like starting a fight. if you're the one initiating it just because yeah. you yeah for whatever petty reason yeah, you're yeah, just if being it's childish petty, whatever if it's petty. then that's yeah that's not okay but then you know if you have to you know, know what i mean know. if you yeah. have to get us out of trouble because i think you need more emo- like emotional maturity than to just resort to violence yeah 100 percent. but also like i see it in like a dangerous situation you're gonna want someone that can like step up that can step up. me i will hurt myself <laughs> like i'm not i, just, I can't fight i can't be fighting fight. if i had to i think i mean? i you think can i can't it. fight i just have a big mouth i don't think you've clocked yet i shouldn't be saying this on the podcast you because can I'm actually myself. fight when did you see me fight, I've seen you when, fight have I fought? Fought? I've seen <laughs> when have i fought i've seen you I've seen you. I feel like I've seen you step up to someone. Remember when we went to the club <laughs> in London, and there was those guys. We were in Croydon. Yeah, I was. I nearly. I. I was. Yeah, you were myself. like. You were like. Yeah, and I was so scared for my life. You can't if tell this man though. took a swing. It was that was it but for me. But you were literally like, "Yeah, come, come for me." <laughs> <laughs> I re- yeah, I like, remember that. This it was, was like so a great ass man, and I was like, I just hid it because. Yeah, I just and I nearly faced the consequences of that. Like, I don't think I could physically be. I think it was. It would have been light out. (laughs) So I mean, I feel like I have a big mouth, and I can get myself to a point where maybe the other person feels so intimidated that That they're like, you know, oh, she's about it. Like, but really, um, I don't think I'm. I'm not a fighter. (laughs) I'm not a fighter. Oh, whoa. Yeah, that is, that's so, um, that is very bitter. It's bitter. And they were saying racial things, like calling them like the N word. They were coming for them. So these people <laughs> were, these people were there to fight and start problems. Um, so that was my bitter. It was just like, why is this like I'm glad racial this, yeah. I don't know why the violence, the racism got involved, but racism always gets involved. Especially in the States. Yeah. I'll say, especially there. But yeah. What's your sweet? So my sweet is that um, 
we were talking about it before the show. I have started teaching podcasts as Her. part of Bittersweet Productions. Oh. Da, 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 da. So she's a teacher, guys. Yeah. So if you want to learn how to make podcasts, yes, <laughs> I've been doing it for a couple of weeks now. First, because I, I know that um, you've done them previously. I was like so nervous to start. Yeah. Um, but I do it at a school. Yeah. So, um, just girls in high school, and I don't know. It's like so wholesome. I love doing it. I think I really like the idea of sharing. Like, if 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 even one of these girls, or if I continue to do it decide to start their own podcast yeah. you know and it's so like we always say it's so easy once you understand like obviously it's hard like mm. um being consistent editing all of those things mm. but um it's not like getting on tv or like you don't need like a and that's what i said to them like you don't need to be scouted or mm. like you don't need all this money all you need is like you can even use your phone yeah um but obviously there's equipment um that I'm doing so if they're listening because I showed them the podcast yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. and one of them was like yeah I listen oh it's so yeah. cute <laughs> it's so it's just, and so how are they as like yeah good I mean it's like like I said it's just like it's a really nice thing to do each week yeah um we talk about like uh we 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 so there's only five of us it's a small group so we like named our podcast oh today God, what is it called it's called one of the girls it's called um oh oh yeah. i like that one yeah, who came yeah. up with that one of the girls did yeah. she killed it she killed it and then next week we're gonna start you better trademark that because if someone's <laughs> out here trying to oh. take that sis i know oh my gosh you're right trademarked um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah anyway it's a sip and spill and we're just um uh gonna that I told them that we can talk about whatever and they pick their own topics. But yeah, what, it's kind, just of, what kind of topics? Um, it's so funny because like the whole the whole class is just us talking basically. Yeah. yeah. Cause like it's like that's what podcasting is. So like today we we're talking about religion. <laughs> um we were talking about uh strict parents. Yeah. We were talking about like experiences that change your life. Wow. Um yeah, uh, the body image everything that we basically we mm. talked about but i did tell them i'm like you can do podcasts on true crime you can do like educational podcasts you can do you can do reviews music reviews it doesn't have to be like always so personal yeah yeah as well but obviously i think they like the idea of like having that space to be able to just chit chat yeah to talk and yeah because i think podcasting you know how much this podcast helps me build my confidence mm. like I swear to you, podcasting is, if you're shy, if you feel like you can't um, speak up in front of other people, mm. yeah, do have a you podcast. Can, it, I mean, like, yeah, it depends also. I mean, you don't <laughs> have to, even if you don't share it. Yeah, that's a good idea yeah. too, because you could like, it's just about practice, even just the, the it's conversation. Yeah. Being able to like, have intentional conversation. And mm. I think sometimes, like, podcasting, obviously you can have conversations that are just like, you know, whatever it is, dating or just mm. um, easy kind of everyday conversations. But a lot of the times you find out that, I don't know, you have like, it doesn't always have to come out in a deep way either. It could just be like you you, you pick a topic and you just dissect. Yeah. And I think that especially during lockdown, it was like therapeutic for yes. me because I'm like, this is something that I can engage in. I can just find a topic. Yeah. I can figure out why I find it interesting, explore this mm. and then just have a chat. Mm, exactly. So and you a, learn, yeah. like you learn, yeah, you learn so much, you know, through that um, topic, like picking a topic and researching it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, especially with some of our topics around like uh, uh, self-development. Um, I know we used to, we used to go ham on like the really political stuff, which I love for us, yeah, by the way. Yeah. But I learned a lot through that yeah. as well um and then again like just building confidence to uh yeah be c confident in what you say mm. and like executing, executing it and then it. talking to people through our interviews and stuff like that so that's why i think these workshops are so blessed and hopefully we can like do keep going keep so continue yeah. to do them through Bittersweet production. I know. I love it. I love so that. That's a really. That's a good sweet sis. Yeah, that's why I like. I was like, I want to do sweet. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I I don't know about this week, but <laughs> yeah. no, nah, I'm happy that we did that. So on to the next segment. This week we came across some really interesting. Am I the asshole? 
chats, conversations, yeah. threads. threads. And we wanted to discuss them on the podcast because some of these, some of these um, situations, they're so juicy. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, and I was, I'm like, we need to get on the, am I the asshole? I know. Way? It's been, a, know it's been a minute do. since we've kind of like parked yeah. this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We were doing it for a while. We were doing it. We drained it for a little while. Yeah. But um, so, am I the asshole for bringing my sister-in-law's wallet to the restaurant when she conveniently always forgets it? So, my female 28-year-old sister-in-law, Amy, always comes to visit from out of town. She stays with us um, instead of a hotel and always wants to get go to expensive restaurants. She always conveniently forgets her wallet or comes up with some excuses as to why she can't pay her share. She then implied that since I make much more money than her, I should be the one to pay. No, not my husband should pay, but me specifically. I do make a fair amount of money, but not so much that I can that I can treat someone every time they come into town. Nonetheless, in the past, I have just paid the bill and asked her to pay me back. She never has. <clears throat> she had me make a, she had me make a reservation at an extremely expensive restaurant last night, and before we left, I made it clear that I wouldn't be paying her bill. This is where I might have been an asshole, and I'll admit I got this move straight from ep- an episode of Two and a Half Men. As we were leaving, her and my husband went to the car. I pretended I forgot something and went back inside. I found her wallet sitting right on top of her suitcase. I put it in my purse and we went to the restaurant. When we were done eating, I asked for separate bills. She said, no, we need one bill because she forgot her wallet again. I reached into my purse and said, this wallet? (laughs) (laughs) She she was... So, it's the... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this one she knew what she was doing yeah. um, oh my <clears throat> god that's the satisfaction yeah, she would have really? felt in that yeah. moment <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah continue <laughs> she, <clears throat> she was extremely furious she said that i should not have touched or grabbed her wallet so Am I the asshole for taking her wallet and bringing it to the restaurant? Yeah. And then there's another edit and she says, Amy just called me. She saw this post and she yelled at me for bad mouthing her on the internet. Honestly, I don't <laughs> care. Amy, hopefully you're reading all these <laughs> comments and it's a wake up call for you. Oh my God. People are crazy. <laughs> that last part killed me. <laughs> how is she going to, Amy, <laughs> how is she, first of all, how did Amy find it? That's my question. That's, yeah. How? How? Like, am I the asshole? Is so annoying. Un- unless this she woman's must like really reposting this stuff. Yeah. And because how are you finding? I don't know. I just feel like it's not an easy one to find. Or it, maybe because it went viral. Yeah, it did. It was one of the um, the top top, the top ones. ones yeah. um, Amy funny. is has no shame. <clears throat> has no shame at all. Yeah, just she does not give a fuck. <laughs> like what? What? And I think I know which Two and a Half Men episode she's what she's talking <laughs> about. Because I remember one of the brothers like kept going to the toilet. Or he would go. He'd always make an excuse to leave before the bill came. Yeah. But um, no, I don't think she's an asshole at all. I think I think Amy needs some... Like, she's so entitled. Yeah. She's so entitled. Like, yeah. I think people that... What do you mean? You make more money than me. Make more money then. Straight up. Like, what? If you Straight or up. Or go to cl- places that you can afford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find it so odd because I've um, I've I've experienced that before. I've had friends who were like, "Oh, you know, like, why is she so stingy? Like, look how much money she makes." And it's like, okay, like, as in, like, why why doesn't she just pay more mm. than us? Or why doesn't she grab the cab? Why doesn't she do this? Why doesn't she do this? Like, she makes so much more. Um, and it's like, no, that's not fair. That's not fair. As I think people decide what they want to do with their money. They should. People be able, like, just because she's making 100K and you're only, you're making 60, like, you don't know the responsibilities this person has. Mm. You don't know the plans that they have for themselves. Mm. Also, it's like none of your business how she spends her money. Mm. Just because it's, you know what I mean? Because for you, it might just seem like, I don't know. You, it's just everybody has different priorities. Money is so a I trigger. Think that's, yeah, money is a trigger. But also, I just think that is out of pocket. Yeah. Like, meet her in the middle, you know. It's one thing to expect to be paid for. It's another thing to book an expensive restaurant 
and then expect to be paid for. Yeah. She's not your she's not your man. She's not, she's your, not your man. Dad. She's not like what yeah. is this? Yeah, I found that I, I found that so odd. It's like how are you gonna purposefully like find the most expensive place? It's like do you have absolutely no shame? Do you have no she has no shame. But some yeah, some people don't it reminds me of the who pays on the first date thing where it's like, did you actually see that TikTok? And it was this um uh, it was f- this black girl in the UK and she was on a date and she was just like filming her face um, and she was on a date with this guy and the bill came and it was way more than he expected um, and he obviously didn't have the money and she was like oh my god like worst date this is so awkward this is so cringe and because he was talking to the waiter you could hear him talking yeah. to the waiter saying um, oh like I can't I can't afford that like would you mind if I go out the back and do the dishes <laughs> do the dishes in the back because i can't pay for the bill he didn't he he, he didn't he, he didn't ask her for um any of it he just didn't expect it to be that much and he's like i literally don't have enough to cover it and then the waiter was just like uh, it kind of looks like i'm like is this stage you just don't know with yeah tiktok but it looks real and you could just hear him, poor guy. He's like, can I just like... But yeah, some people... With, with a situation like that as well, it's like, just pay. Like, the I girl, know, the, the girl. girl. 100%. Yeah. Like, are what are you doing? Why are you, go, why are you making him go through all of this? Not yeah. to... Just to be... Cause you look foolish now. You look stupid. And yeah. He is stupid for not... Like, how do you not anticipate where like how much things are going to cost you as well like i think you can go to a certain place based on how much you have to spend yeah but for her she's out of pocket yeah. like why are you posting something and why are you trying to embarrass this guy or he's already going out of his he's already embarrassing himself yeah and, and bless him for not asking her for for the for the money as well you yeah, know? but that was kind of, what do you mean? Can I wash the dishes? <laughs> like, you're not an employee. <laughs> like, oh, that's so, that's just... But that's why I was like, is this fake? But that's how I think about people who are like, they're, they, they're so entitled to other people's money. It's like, I, if I go on a date or whatever, like, I'm not going to fucking order the most... Exp- like, that's depending what, on who no, I'm with, but I'm not going to go ham, like, expecting someone to spend, like, two, three, four hundred dollars no, on me. No, you're not going like, to do don't that. Know you. Yeah. Um... And even with my family and stuff like that, like no, like you, you can't. Um, yeah, it's just it's just entitled. People are just not. Yeah, just you, she needs to be grateful. This woman, yeah. she needs to like think about. I don't know. I just think she's very much entitled. Mm-hmm. Also, this is your sister in law. Yeah, it's not even your sister, babes. I'll be damned before my sister in law tries to do something like this to me. Absolutely. And not. it's like, why is her husband not checking the sister? I don't understand this whole scenario. Yeah. Why is the man not covering this? Yeah. Especially because the man is her brother. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. He should. He yeah. Should be what does like her income have anything to do with your dinner? It's giving like shade. It's giving like I don't really respect you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's giving not jealousy. I'm not gonna lie. It's giving jealousy. Yeah. Because yeah. Why else are yeah. you? Why are you so pressed why about your so sister? Your sister in law's money. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. But yeah, she's not the asshole. Um, your sister-in-law is an asshole. I'll <laughs> tell you that. All right, let's move on to the next one. Da, 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 da. <sighs> Am I the asshole for checking out of parental duties after my wife said I'm not the father? Damn. Ooh. <laughs> okay, it's already the tagline's already like, what? My wife and I have been married for four years. She brought three kids at, from a previous relationship into the marriage while I have none. Would you do yeah. that? Three kids. She brought three kids into the relationship and he has none. Yeah. Um, as a, like I mean, like, what kind of question is would I do that? But, like, let's talk. Would you take a man that, that, brought that brought three kids, kids. Into, that, into the relationship? Mm. They moved into my house after marriage because I live in a better school district. Obviously, we've, been, we've had our ups and downs, but overall, it's been good until a couple of weeks ago when I woke up and found a large dent running down the entire passenger seat of my car. The dent is about a hand, a, about a hands wide, mm. starts from the front fender and runs down all the way to the rear tire. I was furious and thought someone sideswept my car as it was parked on the street. I checked the doorbell camera to see if anything was recorded. And to my surprise, it was our 16 year old daughter sneaking out of the house in the middle of the night and driving off in my car. Mm. She later returned two hours 
stumbling into the house. Outside of those two events, the doorbell camera didn't record anything else but a couple of passing cars. Mm. That didn't come close to mine. I angrily showed my wife and record the recording and told my told her that our daughter needs to be punished, but she said that she'll talk to her. Mm. I argued that talk isn't enough, which led us to an argument. My wife argued that the new family dynamic has been hard on the kids and while I argued that that doesn't excuse the damage done to my car, I wanted her to agree to ground our daughter from social media and make her get a job to pay for the damages. We argued for hours until she said, I don't get a say in any punishment because I'm not the father. That ended the argument and I walked off. Since then, I've checked out of parental duties. I've Okay, you're doing side eye. Stop. Wait, 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 sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> Since then, I've checked out of parental duties. I've been an adult and still make sure that the kids are safe, fed, but I haven't done anything a father would do. They had doctor's appointments last week for their checkups because they play sports in school and I refuse to drive them, causing my wife to have to take work off. They start school next week and I've dropped them off ever since they moved in but i told my wife that she'll have to do it this year she argued she said she can't because of her work schedule and i answered a mother would figure it out she called me a child and told me that i had to grow up i think since i'm not the father i don't have to take any responsibilities of one but obviously she disagrees am i the asshole and then the edit was i was angry when i wrote this so i left some information out my wife wants me to report my wife wants me to report it to my insurance as the hit as a hit and run and she said that there's no way that anyone has to pay for it i argue that i'll have to pay in the long run because that'll jack up my rates i'm not ignoring the kids and i still talk to them daily i just don't have to do or make any parental decisions like stated above also the other day our son asked me to go out for basketball or football and i told him to go to ask his mother <laughs> oh my god this guy is giving petty 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 grow up communicate what's wrong with you you can't have it both ways it's like you can't be this be a father figure and then like mm. not have choose pick and choose what fatherly responsibilities because of what one fight that you had mm. with your wife about something that you guys disagreed on like communicate figure it out mm. don't just like grow like again like she said grow up like i feel like he's acting very childish and it's like it sounds like he's just it's like revenge yeah 100 percent. which i hate it's like very passive it's very like well it's like well okay you know yeah it's, it's like very like, much like i'm being spiteful and i'm being petty yeah but also she was dead out of line for what she said yeah. Like, Wait, so what did she say? She said that, first of all, the daughter, when he said she's stumbling, I'm guessing that she's implying, he's implying that she, she was, was drunk yeah. or something. You know yeah. what I mean? 16-year-old girl stole his car in the middle of the night, drove, came back home, and now there's a dent in his car. Mm. And he said we have to punish her. When he clarified that and he said uh, we just have to confiscate, like we can't, she can't be on social media, I think for for a period of time no social media and she has to get a job to pay me back and that could have been easily done whether it's a job whether it's duty like chores at home mm. like you've brought these three kids into his life he's been married to you for four years they've he's been a father this whole time mm. for you to now turn around and say you're not the father mm. of my kids so you can't talk about how to punish them it's not like he's asking you to do something like mm. insane or like do something that will harm the kids it's pretty much just telling them like there needs to be a consequence for your actions mm. and i feel like she's trying to downplay what her kid did by not or like she's not being receptive to the man either you know mm. what i mean and if that's your husband you have to you have to communicate you have to be fair too like to say you're not the father would be so hurtful for someone who has allowed has like decided to mm. bring three kids in raise them as his own for you to turn around and say you're not the father i think that's petty as well yeah so he's 100 he's taking it too far he's taking this it man is doing don't punish the kids you're doing too much but also i probably would do the same thing for a while you want to tell me i'm not the mother okay i'll show you what the mother doesn't do <laughs> that's what i want to do <laughs> because i feel like he's trying to teach her a le right now it's like if you think this what he's doing if he thinks that's gonna last him like you, you can probably do like this like for that. you can't you can't but i think they have to have another conversation i don't think he's gonna carry this on i think this man's petty but 
like if he's trying to do this for the rest of their relationship she's gonna leave you like asap mm. but i understand where he's coming from at the same time like not for what he's doing in the extent but i understand like i'm gonna be petty because you just said something so offensive to me um you know yeah i just don't i just i just don't like that i know in relationships communication don't, don't we like have to that. be open yeah i don't love like, like a <laughs> super sensitive like for me i would be like i would be like i was mad i'm sorry i, I would hope that maybe she apologized for saying something so hurtful maybe she did it maybe she's just as petty as him mm. but it's like if you have that fight resolve it resolve talk it. about it don't like carry it on and like hold all this resentment and like just be so sensitive yeah. i'm just the type that's like if we resolve it like get over it 100 percent. Like, but it doesn't look like they've resolved yeah they it. must they it must looks not like not. she's just said what she said and he was like bet and <laughs> I think I think that bet can only last like a week, yeah. and then it's like let's actually fix it. Where he's what he's doing wrong now is he's like okay, you're telling the wife to leave work early to do this. You're yeah. telling her to do, but then I, that just makes me question her. That makes me question the fact like you're not you have you not apologized then? Because why is he doing all of this? Well, that's what I would be interested in knowing. Yeah, like Did if she, she if she has or if she hasn't. Yeah, but because like you know. I'm Stuff like that is what he's doing. It's like poison. It's like poison through mm. a relationship. It's never going to resolve itself when you continue to like hold on to this. And I also get this feeling that maybe he's like, if if you are going to like be in a relationship with someone who has kids, especially three kids, then you have to accept that that's the situation you're in. It kind of feels like he's he's like, oh, you know, I'm so grateful, like, even having this woman and taking on her kids in the first place. So now he feels like he can just, like, jump in and out of, like, father responsibilities or, like, he's done her a favor or something. Mm. That's just the vibe I'm getting from this, like, petty as fuck behavior. Obviously, I don't know this person. Yeah. But um, I think, like, if you are, if, if, if you can't look at someone and um, – be in that relationship and feel like you are that like you've done them a favor by taking on their kids um and then hold that it's like you're either a father in the kid's life or you're not you can't but that's have where i'm way. just thinking because i don't think what he's done there's a, a little things where it's like um as long as it's not affecting the kid's schedule mm. i feel like what like i i think what he's doing is wrong i'm don't get me wrong i think he needs to resolve it i think that if it doesn't he needs to make sure the kids are not affected by their little their argument right now. Mm. And once the kids start to once the kids are affected by what you're doing, if they're missing sport lessons or missing doctor's appointments because you're too petty to take them, then you're a problem because a father wouldn't do that. But yeah. I feel like you know what I mean. It's like you still have to be that figure. Yeah. But I think he's trying to teach his wife a lesson. Yeah, which is which is just childish. Stupid. The whole thing is childish. Yeah. I think obviously they just need to have a conversation yeah. about it. The but um, needs to improve there. The communication needs to improve for sure. I just I, don't know, I see both sides. It's just a tricky one. Yeah, I see both sides. But it really depends on how she handled like that the argument. situation. If she if she like apologized, yeah. then yeah. Um, what were you gonna ask me? If if you would ever date at someone with kids mm, it wouldn't be a no like a strong no i think it depends what age yeah you know what yeah. age if i'm ready to be a, like that's a whole mum. i know if there's any baby mama drama attached to that because baby i'm not trying to drama. be a baby mama like i'm not trying to have drama with your baby mama <laughs> <laughs> i'm not trying to like deal with all of that stuff but if it was like a mature situation maybe i was a bit older i was in my 30s and like you know yeah and I fell in love with a guy with a kid, then that's that. Um, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't rule it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But ideally, I just, I would want my own family. Ideally. Yeah. 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 I think I would as well, but I'd have to be older because right now I just see myself as a child. Yeah. I can't, <laughs> like right now, me as a mother, if someone asked me to, sorry, I can't even <laughs> like pay my bills one time. Yeah. I'm talking about being a mom. But it's crazy because I'm like literally 30 in like two seconds. No, you're not. You still have time, babes. Just oh. enjoy your 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live in it until you have to step out. Yeah. Just be... It's all right. I don't know. But I think 30s... I think 30... Everything just... I think... Why do I keep saying I think, I think, I think, I think, I think... I don't think you're ever prepared for something like motherhood. Yeah, it just happens, It right? happens. Yeah. I, I strongly believe... I'm not even going to say I think... That you will never be 
ready mm. you might feel baby fever mm. you might be excited but when you're in it the older I get, the more I realize that like adults are just people faking it. Like faking the, they're it. just faking it. Everyone, everyone no is faking one. it. Yeah. Everyone is faking it. Even now, I feel like I'm meeting people that are older in their thirties and stuff like that, and I'm just like, whoa, whoa, that's so old. But also, it's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. Or I'm meeting grown people, mm. and I'm having conversations with them. And I'm just questioning their level of maturity <laughs> yeah. or questioning like yeah. their understanding of certain things, yeah. you know? And yeah. I'm just like so confused about, yeah. you know, is this, I don't know. It's just really Wisdom just really does not come with age. Wind- wisdom doesn't. No. There are very young people that have wisdom. Yeah. It I don't know. Not. It's, it's a, it's an interesting one. Yeah, it is. So I just feel like you, you step into like circumstances and that is where you learn situation you yeah. learn about things so yeah. like with motherhood i feel like you you just jump into it and then which is why like um i'd be interested to see what i would do if i ever dated someone that if that did happen but i feel like i wouldn't want i wouldn't like want mm. it to get i wouldn't like entertain it in the first place basically that's what i'm saying yeah because it's just like no i do feel like there is a point like i feel like where the age that we're at now is like a transition period. And I mm. truly, I'm, I'm hoping that there's a point Every where it's like transitioning. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is a transition <laughs> day. <laughs> I just think we're in, this is the worst fucking age. It's like, it's so actually s- the stressful best scary. age. It is. Like, I don't is. know how it's been. I'm not even, I don't even have to convince <laughs> myself that this period is the best. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> why? I feel like from 25 to 20, if you are like, self-aware and you kind of understand yourself and you try to understand the world around you yeah you have so much freedom you're at an age where people take you seriously you have the freedom to really do a lot of the things you want to do we're very lucky people you know we're like everyone if you're like what you're working you have the freedom to travel you have you know the freedom to do a lot of things you know yourself Mm. people take you seriously Mm. You really can do anything. You, you can live the life that yeah. you create for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yes, there are expectations. Yes, you might have like responsibilities and all that kind of stuff. But it's just different. Yeah. Everything that you romanticize, you can live it. Whoa. It's really just up to you wanting to do it or not. And then when you become like 30 plus, then it's like, not 30 plus, but I reckon like 35 plus. Yeah. It's like the expectations are a lot like they're they're just a lot heavier if you have a family now you start living you know for other people which is not always a bad thing because you know you obviously make that decision i don't know i just feel like there's it's a different this period of time is really when you're just living for yourself yeah i know what you mean it's it's like the best time yeah i really try and like remember that when i'm like depressed (laughs) yeah everything i'm just like let me just go and just i don't know anything anything you can do anything you can literally do anything like i'm like i'm going to bali period Um, she's going to bali (laughs) she's getting up and going three weeks she told me (laughs) you have no responsibilities i have no one but i love that for you yeah i know what you mean bitch but it's like on the other side it's like i think we're in this period where it's like what what are we doing what are we doing lied to Yes. We thought we thought that life was supposed to be like this, but now it's like this, and everyone's just trying to figure shit out. Yeah, there's scary. also there's all of that stuff too, but wow. that's day by day, and that's like, yeah, I think that sh- that still happens at 35. Yeah. I just think it's about how you choose to, like, you make your own choices that can lead you either closer to whatever your goals are and what un- what your goals are not. Yeah, well, that you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So I just feel like, but this is you're in that situation you're in a you're in a situation of like freedom Mm. you got no kids some of us don't have mortgages (laughs) a lot of us um you know you just have like more freedom of choice at Mm. this age yeah less money though because i feel like in your 30s you'll be having way more money and less freedom that's why this is the scam this is how they set us up 30 flirty and thriving per (laughs) <laughs> um anyway he's the asshole he's the asshole in my eyes he's the asshole in your eyes yeah he i is. think he's like on the fence he's the asshole i think he's on the I fence i think if he tries to do this whole petty thing for more than a week then he's the asshole he's obviously dragging it like <laughs> maybe he did this all in the space of a week i know what you mean though we don't like petty men is just not cute yeah it's like get over it but also she was out of line don't subtly punish someone that's the worst thing you can do. Don't just 
do this weird passive aggressive shit that I don't really understand what you're doing. It's like at least be straight up. Yeah. But but the thing is he wants to stay in this thing with her, but he's like pissed. But it's like that's why communication is important, deal with it, move on. Obviously you you're entitled to still be upset, but you're not entitled to move like a child. No. You're not. That yeah. is a grown ass man. So So you would dump him? Dump him. <laughs> Leave that for your relationship. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's not like jokes. But have a conversation. I don't know. I mean, we're not talking to him. But no, like, I feel like he's, 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 half, my hand. he's <laughs> half He's half on the fence of being an asshole. Yeah. But I also can understand from one petty person to another. <laughs> yeah. Like, but if I was his wife, I'll double down on the pettiness. <laughs> Me and my kids were all going to my sister's house this this whole for the <laughs> yeah. next two weeks. That's what you have to do. That's that's how I would move in that situation. So I'd be like, whatever. If you want to move like that, see you later. Anyways, let's move on to our dilemma of the week. Yes. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So the dilemma is, hey, girls. So I have a friend who has openly said that she likes girls. Lately, she's been gifting me really random and expensive things. And little things that she says and does makes me feel like she has a crush on me. A lot of my other friends have also told me that they feel the same way. Mm. I like men and she knows this. And at this point, I'm really it's really not harming me. But I feel bad that she keeps buying me nice and expensive gifts for no reason Mm. i keep trying to decline these gestures but she continues to buy me things and she gets offended if i say that i can't accept should i say something to spare her from spending money and effort on something that will never happen or stay quiet for the sake of our friendship Mm, this one's a interesting one it's a sticky dilemma yeah i mean obviously i think that she should um I think it's, yeah, I think that she just needs to, like, actually, I can't, I think she needs to say say something. Um, I don't know, like, if you're really friends, like, I think it's, it would be, I, I personally think it would be, like, weird not to. But also, it's, like, maybe this person is being friendly. I don't know why. Wait, oh, so she openly said that she was um, gay. Yeah, yeah, and then started gifting her. gifting her things, and she'll be like, be "Can you just give me the the dot the dot points again?" What of was her, it? what she's of doing. The dilemma. So what she said was that she is constantly gifting her random things and really expensive things, um, and then she does make me feel. It says here she does make me feel like she has a crush on me and it's the little things that she's saying to her so basically she's saying little things to her that makes her feel like she has a crush on her Mm. she's buying her random randomly expensive gifts Mm. um and then she gets mad if she declines the gifts Mm. so i'm guessing they're if they're expensive it's kind of like why why are you constantly buying me gifts that are expensive yeah 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 i think that you could just kind of like if it's your friend like pull her aside you know um it's like a a not a not a hetero relation. It's the same. Mm. Like if it's a boy that's doing this to you, you'd probably just be like, "Hey, you know, I'm not interested." If it's a friend, that's a guy. <laughs> Would you? Oh, if it was a friend. Yeah, yeah if it was a friend. Yeah, but yeah. I think the fact that she's um, maybe because she's a lesbian, she's feeling a bit more like you know. But I do sometimes I get the sense in situations like this that. Um, when people find out that they have a, f- a friend that is, uh, you know, LGBTQI+, sometimes they think, they just assume that they like them. When mm. it's like, it's not like that. We're just, just, We're just, just friends, being cool. Yeah. But obviously, like, you know, this person can read the situation. But I would just say, like, mm. pull her aside. Don't start. Don't talk to your other friends about it. Don't be like, I think she likes me. Like, mm. you know, like, just... Treat it like any any other situation, situation and be like, you know, like you're my friend. These gifts make me feel a little bit uncomfortable because you know that like I'm not a lesbian mm. and I'm not like I'm, I'm not interested in pursuing anything with you. But I really want to keep this friendship. It's important to me. But if this continues, then like we're going to have to set some boundaries. Yeah. I agree. I think there's nothing mal- more mm. I would add. I get why she would feel slightly uncomfortable because I don't. I think it's a situation of her maybe reading the situation because she's if she's constantly buying her gifts sometimes yeah. and she hasn't been doing that before, yeah. then it's a bit questionable, mm. you know. But 100%, I feel like if she's your friend, if you see her as a friend, you should be able to pull her up and say, um, 
you know, either ask her why she's doing it mm. or just like you can decline. Mm. You can decline. Even if it makes her upset, then you can just say it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, you know, you can make not, it clear that. Yeah. You're not, she's that you're just into. as much as she's entitled to mm. like, you know, giving whatever, buying mm. you the gift and then feels like you have to accept it. You're just as entitled to like reject a, a gift from someone. Like yeah. once you've told someone like, look, I don't feel comfortable. Just like, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's completely fair enough to literally just be like, can you stop? Without yeah. even being like, I think you like me. You can with, just be yeah. like, yeah, can you just like stop with the gifts? They're too expensive. They're too much. Yeah. And I, I literally can't accept them. 100%. And hopefully she'll kind of like get the... the, the get the, the vibes. Vibe. Yeah. Because I get that too. Like I would feel a little bit... Um, after a while, it's kind of like you feel like you owe that person something. Yeah. Someone keeps giving you a gift and you're not giving them anything <laughs> back. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's why I was like, I mean, if it was a random guy and he was just doing it and you've told him, it's like, okay, if you want to gift me, gift Yeah, I'm me. trying to think of what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> nah. If a guy was just gifting you random things. Yeah, I would. I, I don't know, because the toxic side of me might be like, mm. but if AirPods. he was my friend, then no. <laughs> no, if but if he was like a random guy, then yeah, I'd probably take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a friend, it's kind of, you're actually just abusing that friendship. Yeah, yeah. Just gets yeah, a bit course, awkward. Like, yeah. You can't treat someone like that. And even, to be honest, if you know someone likes you, the kind thing to do is to let them know. You shouldn't just be like leading them on like that just because you feel um, awkward, which is something that, I struggle with sometimes I just tend to like let things roll roll on yeah. maybe like entertain it a little bit blah blah oh, blah you gotta cut but you it gotta be off clear. cut it off because you don't know what other people are thinking like you don't know what signals and some people they like the attention you know so they just like keep it going but it's like that's toxic mm-hmm. you shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that saying me but I've like literally done that before <laughs> you've accepted gifts or you've accepted, accepted g- I've just like known someone's liked me and kind of just like entertained it just for vibes <laughs> yeah i know i feel like we've all been there yeah but you just, just you gotta cool. you have to have a, like a cut off date with things like that yeah. it's when you have you seen the meme and it's like when you when you keep um you accidentally end up married like a <laughs> oh fling God. turns a situationship yes. and you're like eh. yikes how did i get here <laughs> how did i get here you know how you got there sis yeah straight up anyways we'll leave it there for this for this this week week, week yeah this week if general. anyone else wants to send a dilemma you know you can send it through all the links in our bios mm. guys send them through we want to hear all your dilemmas if it's about a relationship if it's about your dating situation your career your annoying friends mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever it is whatever the tea is send it through we want to hear it and we're going to be discussing them every week on the podcast and we're going to wrap it up here yes. this is nice fun. short and sweet this week we'll yeah. see you guys again next week have a blessed week bye bye